One, two. Good morning, Hillcrest. Are you ready to worship this morning? How many came this morning expecting a blessing from God? All right, let's try that again. How many came this morning expecting a blessing from God? So if you believe like me, let's just stand to our feet and just welcome the presence of the Lord this morning. We want God to release his power in our lives this morning. We want his power to fall upon us. Amen. Just want you to sing along with the praise team with us. And let's just call upon our God this morning. Hallelujah. Here we go. Lord, and happy Sabbath we are in the house of the Lord are, are you happy to be here is it truly a happy Sabbath amen you know we are here to give God what is due God and, and, and you know sometimes we, we don't embrace that I, I think about what is it to come and worship God it is to give him the respect that's due him it's to give him the honor that's due him and that's what I want to do at church. That's why I come to church. That's what I hope you come to church to do. You know, as we think about our mission statement, I want us to repeat our mission statement here in just a second. 
But if we are a beacon of light, we, we have something to be shining about, right? Does God dwell in your life? Are, are you a beacon of that love? If not, I hope that today through the worship experience that your cup is filled and overflowing so that when you leave here, people will be able to recognize that you've been in the presence of Jesus. Let's go ahead and repeat our mission statement this morning. Serving as a beacon of light while proclaiming the love of Christ to all people. If you would, bow your heads with me. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you on this Sabbath day. We are grateful to be in your house. We come expecting to receive a blessing and then to take that blessing to a world that's dark. Lord, help us to be that beacon. Help us to be that shining light today. Lord, I pray that you'll be with our pastor today, that you will anoint him, and that we will truly have open hearts to receive the message that you have prepared through your manservant. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the entire service, and may we truly know that your presence is with us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. morning. What was the, what was the, hymn? the hymn is Showers of Blessing. I can't remember the name, the number. Showers of Blessing. One ninety five. Thank you. One ninety five. Showers of blessings. We'll do the first two stanzas. There should be showers. There shall be seasons. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior. Second stanza, like you mean it. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reminding again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. Showers we need. Showers? Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we need. Amen. Time for the children's story. Come on down. Come on, children. Oh, we got a lot this morning. Come on, children. Take me to the top. Here we go. You ought to be there when Jesus saved my soul. Come on. You ought to be there when Jesus made me whole. Sing it. 
Put your hands together. You would have been there when Jesus washed me clean. Hey, but you would have been there when the Holy Ghost fell on me. Well, was a Friday evening. We'll wait for you when I let the Lord. It ever happened to me once I was blind. But right now I see you ought to be mad. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Wee! We'll wait for you. Is there one more? Is there one more? No? Huh. <laughs> I feel good this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a remix. I see a few little small faces. We'll wait for you. Uncle Cyrus is a friend to all the small. <laughs> all right. I said it feel good this morning. <laughs> Stay close to me, y'all. I said it feel good. <laughs> Woo! Wow, boy. It seems like Uncle Cyrus has been around town and all up and down and everywhere. But God is blessing my ministry, so I ain't going to complain. Any day that I can spend above the ground is a good day to me. <laughs> uh, oh, I see the adults are awake this morning. But uh, let's go ahead and get to it. My name is Uncle Cyrus. That's S-E-R-A, I-O-U-S. My mama name is Cyrus for one reason only. That's because I that's right i don't tell children's stories i tell object lessons because y'all some smart cookies and you all are gonna have to pay attention this morning because we're gonna move fast this one today is one fire uh pj watch that up come on come on sit up there you go there you go all right here we go all right uh you know when uncle cyrus is in town it's okay to make a little bit of noise actually it's okay to make a lot of noise so we're gonna ask you this today i want y'all to get it right off the bat as loud as you can good morning boys and girls good morning how y'all in the adult world late as usual all right here we go today's object lesson is called where is your spark where is your spark now one of the things that uncle cyrus does on a regular basis, because I can't afford to pay somebody to do it for me, is I work on cars. That's right, I work on cars. So I know what makes a car run. I know what makes it stop, too. But I tell you this right now, when you know how to work on a car, mm -hmm, it's a good thing. Because you can save some money, and you can do some good in the meantime. Now, don't everybody start calling Uncle Sirius right after this, because I ain't working on your cars, OK? I work on mine because I can't afford to pay people. But if you can't afford to pay me, don't call me. All right, here we go. In my hand, I hold what is an ordinary spark plug. What is this? A spark plug. Say it loud. A spark? 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 Oh, that's good. That's, about the, that's what I want. I want y'all to yell it at me. All right, this is a spark plug. Now, this is small. Very small. See how small it is? Cars are big. But I can tell you this right now, if you're missing even one spark plug, that car is going nowhere. It's not moving at all. It probably won't even start. It probably won't even st 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 start. Mm -hmm. Now, what does a spark plug do? It does exactly what its name is. It provides a spark. What does it provide? Spark. What does it provide? Spark. What does it provide? Spark. A spark. That's right. Now, Uncle Cyrus had another um, teaching aid that he left at home, but you're just going to have to imagine it. When you put gas in a car, all right, stay with me, stay with me. I'm going to move fast. We're going to put it all together. When you put gas in a car, the gas goes to the engine, and it mixes with air to create a mist. To create a what? Mist. Create a what? Mist. Now this mist will do absolutely nothing unless it has a spark. That's right. Now somebody's getting it. All right. Let's try it from the beginning. Now you put gas in the car. It's create, it mixes with the air. And it goes to the engine and creates a mist. Right? And the mist is worth nothing unless it has a spark. That's right. Now. When that mist mixes together, it becomes what we call combustible. I won't make you say that. But when the spark sparks 
the mix. It creates an explosion. It creates a what? Explosion. A what? Explosion. A what? Explosion. That explosion pushes the piston down, which turns the crank, which turns the transmission, which turns the drive shaft, which turns the rear end, which makes the car go fo forward. All right, let's try this again. You put gas on the car. Gas goes to the engine. Engine mixes with the air to create a mist, right? The mist is worth nothing without a spark, right? The spark creates an explosion, which pushes the piston, which turns the crank, which turns the transmission, which turns the drive shaft, which turns the rear end, which moves the car. Yeah. Now, if y'all was awake, <laughs> and I'm gonna talk to you, Pastor. <laughs> I thought I'd get a shout out of you on that one. Let's try this again. <laughs> you put gas in the car, the gas goes to the engine, it mixed with the air to create a mist. The mist is worth nothing unless you have a? The spark creates an explosion which pushes the piston, which turns the crank, which turns the transmission, which turns the draft shift, which turns the rear end to move the car. <laughs> Woo! I'm trying, to tell, I'm trying to keep my peace here. I'm, tr I'm trying to keep my peace. Because what does that have to do with us today? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Our spark is one thing. Our praise. Hmm? What does that have to do with anything? Well, our church, all these people here are like a car. God is the driver, and he's trying to move us. <laughs> if I had a praying church, <laughs> God is trying to move us. Yeah, so we can have all the resources and we can have all the money and we can have all the people, which is like gas mixing with the air, but it ain't worth nothing unless there is a, unless there is a, and how do you know you have a spark? Because without a spark, it's just dead. <laughs> so when you come to church, do you sit there and go to sleep? <laughs> or do you stand up and sing when the praise team sings? <laughs> do you bow your head when the preacher prays? <laughs> do you open your Bible or look on your iPhone these days when we're reading the scripture? We need to praise God because in order to have a spark, there needs to be praise. Now, the only way that we can move forward is if we take everything that we have with everything that we're doing and give God some praise so he can move us Stay right there. This is a message really for the adults today. <laughs> You've been here for 75, maybe longer years, huh? And you're just uh, sitting there dead when you come to church, <laughs> and you're wondering why God can't move us. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to praise him just a little bit. <laughs> Here's my testimony. See, I had a rough week, <laughs> but I decided I was just going to praise God because I knew that everything around me would explode if I just gave him just a little bit of praise. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. What I'm trying to tell you is, kids, when you're stuck, give God some praise. When you feel like you can't move forward, give God some praise. If you don't get your homework or your sister is bothering you or your brother is bothering you, give God some praise. Here's one thing that can't happen when you praise. You can't frown when you praise. You can't complain when you praise. You can't talk bad about somebody when you praise. The two just don't happen at the same time. Stay right there. Adults, if y'all want to stop bickering and fighting, praise God. <laughs> Create a spark. Why? You can't talk about somebody and praise God at the same time. You can't cut down the pastor and praise at the same time. You can't be worried and praise at the same time. You can't criticize and be praised at the same time. So, what you want to do is put some gas in the car that mixes with the air. <laughs> That creates a mist. <laughs> that mist is the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit ain't worth nothing unless there's a... <laughs> and then when you give God some praise, that spark happens, which creates an explosion, <laughs> which turns the church, <laughs> which turns the church, <laughs> which turns the church, <laughs> which turns the community, <laughs> which turns the community, <laughs> which turns the world <laughs> as <laughs> the world <laughs> turns and we can move, and we can move, and we can move. If you want to move forward, all you gotta do is give God praise. Give God some 
pray. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm telling y'all, this got good to me this week. So this week, when you're coming forward, when, you, when you're at school, if you're at daycare or something like that, you find yourself in a tough position, just say, thank you, Jesus. Because you can't do bad, you can't experience bad while saying thank you at the same time. And when you come to church, be an example for the adults. <laughs> Give a spark so we can move. So we can move. So we can move. Last time with a loud voice, so we can move. Hallelujah. Who wants to pray? Who wants to? Somebody come pray for our dance. <laughs> come on, come on. We'll have brother and sister. Kylan and Journey. All right, let the ladies go first. Come on. Dear Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for my mommy and daddy. I hope I hope I be good at school and at, at a church. I, I wish I'd be good. And I love my brother and sister and my, and my dad. And amen. Amen. All right. Dear Jesus, help me be good. Help me be good with my mom and daddy. I hope we move forward today and I hope. God protect us from everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, we just thank you for the prayers of the little children. We're asking right now, Lord, that you would help us to have a spark today. Let today be the day that we decide we're going to move forward, Lord. Accept our praise. Make it acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. The children are going to come now and collect our Christian education offering. We like the stuff that jangles, but we like the stuff that's silent even better. So please give liberally to the Christian Education Fund. Good morning, Hillcrest. Now, I, I, I'm going to do that all over again. Uh, good morning, Hillcrest. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, is it, is it the lack of sun outside that is impacting our worship experience here today how many are happy to be here today how many know that the Lord is still in control and that he is still able to do way more than we could ask or think how, how many believe that today I have any believers in the house today we, we serve a good God uh, whose mercy endureth forever I, I want to pause for a moment because I always always get off track, but I, I have some special guests here with me today. Miss Keisha Smith and, and, and my best friend. You, you all will get a, a chance to meet my best friend, Malik. Malik, uh, would, you, would you wave your hand? That, that, that's my buddy there. They're, they're all the way from Memphis, Breath of Life. Keisha has a new addition in her life too as well. Keisha, it's so good to see you all. Uh, uh, Malik is my that, 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 that was my deacon. He was one of my elders. He was my, uh, he, he was my right-hand man at, at Breath of Life. So, Malik, it's good to see you. I'll get to, get to greet you in just a moment. Uh, so thank you all for hanging out with us today. Thank you all. I, I don't want to miss any other guests that we may have here in the house today uh, before we go any further. Are there any other guests here today? Any other individuals that are visiting with us? God bless you, my brother. I see your hand. Anybody else? I see that couple right there. Oh, I spoke you all yesterday, right? Praise God. Praise God. Uh, we're, we're so thankful for God's goodness and mercy in just a few moments. The praise team will come out and remind uh, uh, the church why we're here, but also tell our guests what we do here at Hillcrest. Is that all right with everybody today? Uh, just a couple of things I want to share with you. We're closing in on the 30-day mark for our Revelation seminar, and we're, we're expecting the Lord to do some special things here at our church. And notice I didn't say my Revelation seminar nor Pastor Wade's Revelation Seminar. This is our Hillcrest Revelation Seminar. And what I'm looking for, what I, what I need you to start doing even today, is to think of two to three names of individuals that you would like to see at this Revelation Seminar. We're going to start October the 6th, which is a Sunday evening. We're going to kick off in a grand way. We're expecting the Lord to do some special things. We're not spending money on Bible workers going out and bringing people in. We believe that it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is. 
If we want to see the church grow, we must take time to in invite individuals that are in our close circle of friends, relatives, co-workers. We're asking you to take time to start inviting them out. But before you do that, I want you to start writing those names down. I want you to be prepared by Wednesday to start bringing those names with you. And we want to start asking God to open some doors in their hearts and make a way for you to impress upon them to be a part of this Revelation seminar. Is that all right with everybody? So I, I want you to begin the inviting process, begin the process of asking God to do something special for at least, if you and I don't have at least two or three individuals, and, and it's even harder for me because I've just been here a year. But for this church, for individuals here, if you don't have two or three people that you can't say, I'd like to see be a part of this seminar, you need to question whether you're really uh, serious about moving forward. And I'm just going to put that on the table. There should be individuals that you can challenge to be a part of this seminar. We want to start every, uh, every other evening. Um, we, we'll give you the dates, the dates and the days that we'll be running it. It won't be uh, nightly. It will be every other night. Uh, more than likely, we're going to start at 7 o'clock sharp and finish at 8.15. We're talking about an hour and 15 minutes to present the un unadulterated truth from the Word of God. Is that all right with everybody? Now, I also need you to do something else. I need this church to be praying for our church, in particular, our church board. We're trying to transform the way we do ministry here at Hillcrest. We're trying to get out of just be merely being a church that's about giving out information. We want to learn how to do transformation of lives. We want to we want to we want to be able to watch God transform not only people on the outside, but we want transformation on the inside as well. And so we're challenging our board in four areas. We're challenging our board to be clearer about the process for transformation, uh, the movement for transformation, the alignment for all that we do. We want to make sure that everything we do here at Hillcrest has a purpose, has a rhyme, has a reason. And and then we want to also look at our focus. What is our focus for everything that we do with regard to transformation? And so as we begin doing that, there are going to be some things that we used to do here at Hillcrest that are just traditional things that we probably won't be able to do any longer. I wish you all were listening today. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to try to get out of the mindset that we just do things just because maybe everybody else is doing them or we've been doing it this way for X amount of years. Oh, y'all quiet today. But that's all right. That's all right. You'll catch it. You'll catch it. Then the last thing I want to remind you of next Sabbath is Men's Ministry Day. Somebody ought to say amen. At least a brother ought to say amen. At least the men's ministry leader ought to say amen. 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 We're having men's ministry day here at the church. Uh, Dr. Dr. Andrew Harwood will be blessing us with the word of God. We believe he has a word from the Lord to share with us on men's ministry day. We're asking for all men to contribute. How much? Twenty dollars. Everybody's going to get quiet on me now. Uh, Twenty dollars uh, so we can offset the expenses for this very special day. Um, is, 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 is everybody OK today? Is somebody OK today? Is anybody okay today? You know, I, 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 I was thinking about how marvelous the Lord is and how good he is and how he does things his own way in his own time. And sometimes when your back is up against the wall and you feel as though you have no place to turn, God is working behind the scenes orchestrating things for his good. And so I want to tell you a quick story as I prepare to take my seat. And during World War II, a, a U.S. Marine was separated from his unit on the Pacific Island. The fighting had been intense and, and the smoke and crossfire was just bouncing off. And, and, and he had lost, this, this particular Marine had lost contact with his comrades. As a matter of fact, he was separated from his comrades. And he was all alone in the jungle. And so he found himself on a high ridge and he was trying to figure out where do I go who do I turn to and so he saw a cave and so he ducked into one of those caves he could hear the enemy was directly behind him he knew that the enemy was searching for him 
So the comrade did all that he knew to do. He said, Lord, if you would, would you make a way out of no way? Would you build for me a brick wall so that they cannot see me and, and hide me from the enemy? What, but, but then he said these last words. He said, Lord, Lord, whatever your will is, I'll still love you anyhow. There he is in the cave and he can, he can, he's looking out of the darkness of the cave and he could see the, the, the enemy searching for him and he knew that they were getting closer and closer. But, well, in front of him, he saw a spider that was, that was making up a spider web in front of the cave and so he started laughing. He said, Lord, I asked you for a brick wall and all you're giving me is a spider web. Spider kept on weaving his web and weaving his web and just about the time that the spider stopped weaving his web, the enemy got a little closer and he noticed that the enemy looked into one cave and darted out of it and it was walking up on the cave that he was in and the enemy looked and just walked on by. The enemy thought, the enemy thought that nobody could be inside of there because there's a spider web that's blocking the way. Nobody could have ducked in there that quickly could the, could, could the spider have woven his weave, his web. And so he thought to himself, Lord, you've got a strange sense of humor. Lord, you're able to take care of people even in the midst. I thought that you would have at least done some miraculous thing for me. But all you did was weave a web and cause the enemy to duck on by me. Can I pause for a moment and tell you that God specializes in doing the impossible God still weaves webs in front of all that the enemy would throw at you sometimes all you have to do is just call on him I stopped trying to tell God how to bring deliverance my way I wish I had some help in here today I stopped trying to tell God what doors to open for me. I stopped trying to tell God how to bless me. Here's my prayer. Any way you bless me, Lord. I wish I had a few any way you bless me, Lord, folk up in here. I'll be satisfied. Any door you open for me, Lord, will be all right with me, Father. Any way, any way, any way you do it, Lord, it's all right with me. I, I wish I had a few folk in here that would just give God praise anyhow, uh, that would give him honor anyhow, no matter how he's going to do it. I wish I had some folk in here that just knew uh, that God can do anything uh, but fail. I'm wondering if there's some folk that need him to just weave a, a web, uh, open a door, and um, uh, uh, maybe you need him to pay a bill for you. Uh, maybe you need him to show up in the hospital room for you. Maybe you need him to open a door for you. Maybe you need him to walk into your marriage and heal you. I don't know. And what you don't tell him how to do it. Just say, Lord, I'm just going to trust you uh, to make a way out of no way. I'm wondering today as I take my seat if there are about five folk in here that have that type of faith that whatever you do, just do it, Lord. However you choose to do it, just do it, Lord. Oh, that's my desire today. Lord, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not wise enough to tell you how to do it, nor am I wise enough to tell you that you can't do it. I just know this much that whatever you say, however you choose to do it, I'm going to trust you even now. Oh, praise team, bless us now. Remind us, remind our folk here today, especially our guests, that this is a special place and there is no place like this place. And uh, we are a Sabbath keeping place. What are we? A Sabbath. Bible believing. People of God. We are hand clapping. Foot stomping. Praise giving. Smiling faces. Oh, I wish I had some help in here today. <laughs> yes. Oh, Lord have mercy. We've got a birthday. Yeah. Whose birthday? No, you didn't tell me. 
Me, me. I thought I saw. Me, me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. Mimi, would you stand up? Would you stand up? Today is Mimi's birthday. Let me, let me, let me, let me do a qualitative statement right now to all of our guests. Uh, the members allow me to do this. I cannot sing a lick, but it's from my heart. And so Mimi, happy birthday to you. There you go. There, somebody said make a joyful noise. Break it down in the key of Z for me right now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mimi. <laughs> Happy birthday. To you. I feel my help coming on. Huh? Let's, let's keep it spiritual now. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord. Let you thank you brothers <laughs> y'all such a help may god bless you as we worship him today let's worship him in spirit and in truth let's give god all that we have as we on offer unto him praise and honor for all that he's done god bless you today Amen, amen. Let's keep that smile that we had on our faces going. Let's welcome our visitors this morning. We want to welcome them and let them know how we worship here at Hillcrest. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet and welcome your neighbors. We're a Bible-believing, Sabbath-keeping kind of church. Welcome to Hillcrest. Welcome to Hillcrest. And where the people of God. For the Lord. 
worshiping. Praise and worshiping people of God. We're hand clapping, hand clapping, foot stomping, foot stomping, spirit filled, spirit filled people of God. We are the kingdom building, Sabbath people of God. We are the kingdom building, Sabbath keeping people of Amen. Amen.
is your power, glory, mercy, and your grace. Stop worshiping now. Come on. He's great. 
to God in this place. Sometimes you just got to come outside of yourself and just open that shell up and, and just let the Holy Spirit have his way with you. See, you, you go to work all week and you, you hustle and bustle and you take care of your kids and, and you do all the things that you need to do. I'm getting a little Pentecostal right now, but you, you do what you have to do to make it through the week. And I don't know about you, but that's not always easy. I didn't intend to preach this morning, but somebody needs to hear a testimony this morning. Somebody needs to hear about the goodness of God this morning. And I don't know how you can sit there and just relax with your hands underneath your thighs and not get up and give God praise this morning. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You don't need a cheerleader to get you riled up because you should already know how good Jesus is. And if you don't, I, I, I recommend a book to you. It's an old book. The language is a little funny. The thus thou's and heretofores and forthwiths sometimes can confuse you, but they make other versions for you. But it's called the Bible. And if you open its pages and you peruse it and just let it open up wherever it may, you'll find something in there that will give you a boost throughout the week that will encourage your spirit uh, I think I'm in here by myself this morning either way me and the praise team are going to remind you how good God is we're going to tell God that he's all we need how many know God is all you need he's sufficient in all by himself you don't need nothing else you don't need another self-help book another motivational speech but God is all you need come on praise team help me tell them God is all we need put your hands together saints come on
two. What did Jesus say? about how much you need God and you just look at him for who he is you understand there's nobody greater not Buddha not Muhammad not Joseph Smith you don't know who Joseph Smith is Mormons Nobody greater than God. So just sing with the praise team this morning and, and, and cry out to the Lord that there's nobody greater. This is your time to testify about how there's nobody greater than Jesus. He's your sufficiency. Yes. mountain looked all around couldn't find nobody went down into the deepest valley looked all around down there couldn't find nobody went across the deep blue sea couldn't find one to compare 
to your love, your grace, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. There's nobody greater than Jesus. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. There's nobody greater than my God. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great, nobody greater than you. Nobody can heal like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways and mighty in your hand. You are he who carried our redemption's plan. You are he who carried our redemption's plan. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. <laughs> nobody great. Stay right there, stay right there, searched all over. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, Jesus. Nobody greater than you. It's nobody great, nobody great. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I dare you to try and find somebody greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than Jesus. If there's somebody greater than Jesus, stay seated right now. Stay seated. If there's somebody greater than Jesus, nobody greater. Testify with your mouth. Come on. Nobody greater than Jesus this morning. Stay right there. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. We're just going to stay there until you feel it this morning. Nobody greater than you. Bless your name, Lord. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. We lift you up, nobody Jesus. Greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. We proclaim this morning, Jesus, that you are ruler and sustainer of our lives this morning. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Last time, nobody greater. Nobody greater.
Hillcrest, it's now that special time in our service, not where we stop worshiping God. This is actually the best time to worship God because we talk directly to God in prayer. Now, some of us, we've had a valley this week, but some of us have been up on a mountaintop. And so, Lord, you know where we've been this week. And you know what you need to talk to God about right now. So as a family, I'm inviting you to come down and join me. You may have a praise. You, you may have something that you need to bring to God and ask for His, for His intervention. You, you know, we're, we're approaching Monday's going to be the first day of the month. And the first day of the month always brings bills. And so we worry so much about money. But God, He owns the cattle on one or two hills, I believe what the Scripture says, right? No, no, He owns cattle on how many hills? A thousand hills. So He says, if you'll have faith and trust in Me, I can provide for you because you are My children. And so I just, I just invite you to come down, join Me. But whatever's on your heart, as a family, let's get together and let's continue to praise God even in prayer. So if you would, bow your heads with me now. If you can, you can touch a neighbor. I ask you to just reach out, grab a neighbor's hand, and let's feel God. Let's feel the love for each other as we lift up our prayers to God. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this Sabbath morning. Lord, we came for one reason. That was to praise and worship you. And that's what we've been doing. Lord, we pray that it was acceptable to you. Lord, my heart's been moved by the songs. My heart's been moved by this family as they've come down and they've joined hands together. Lord, united, we are wanting to move forward. We want that spark to be us. We want to move this community forward. We want to show them that we have an experience with you, that we have a relationship with you, that you are transforming our lives, and we want to show other people what that love can do for their lives. Lord, we know that there are many that are sick, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. We bring our cares, our troubles, our worries, and we're putting them on the altar before you. Lord, you know each one of those. And we're asking that you intercede, that, that, that you provide what it is that we need. But Lord, most of all, we're praying that you'll meet our spiritual needs and that you'll fill us with your love so that when we leave this place, people can see that we are a people of God. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to bless the rest of this service. I pray that you'll be with Pastor Stokes. Lord, our hearts need to be cultivated. They need to be prepared for the seeds that are about to be sown. Lord, when those seeds are received in our heart, we're praying that, that you will water and that you will tend them and that we truly, as a people, will bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we humbly ask these things. We know that you are attentive and that you are listening. And even as we are praying, that you are answering those prayers. And so, Lord, we give you the thanks and all the praise and all of the glory as we ask these things in your name. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen.
restore the joy, remove the pain, dry tears stained us, sin led to rain. If you don't come, all hope is lost to them that trust, trust in the cross, our power. Father, we claim the promises of the song. Send your latter rain in here today. Pour your spirit out here today. Thank you for the privilege. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me pause for a moment and thank church for your prayers on behalf of my travels and on behalf of my mom who is holding on. Um, I, I had one purpose in mind. My mom brought me into the church uh, and for some unknown reason she left and had not been back and my heart's desire was to hear her say that she loved the Lord. And in her in and out, we had that conversation. And so I'm all right, and I know she's going to be all right. Her time is short, but she knows her Savior. And as I look over and I see the Fleming family who has just gone through this, just want to encourage you that the Lord is still able and he's with you. And the Lord gives us peace in the midst of storms. So today, today, if you all don't mind, I'm, I want to talk about service, but I want to talk about it from a different vantage point. The message today is entitled, I'm going to serve him anyhow. I'm going to serve him anyhow. I wish I had a few folk that would just join me in, in just saying, I'm, I'm going to serve him anyhow. What, what do you do when you're called to serve and yet you have so many hindrances in your life? We are assailed by difficulties and struggles, struggles on our jobs, struggles in our homes, struggles with our finances, and struggles with, with our sense of who we are, struggles to live a Christian life. Anybody know anything about these struggles? Struggles to live out your faith and struggles to hear the voice of God or to know the will of God. Yet with all of these struggles and some that I have not mentioned, we are still challenged to serve God anyhow. Challenge to share our faith even in the midst of difficult situations. But, but, but what do you do when you are faced with so many challenges, so many perplexities, so many doubts in our own minds, so much brokenness, so much hurt, so many scars from days gone by, and yet even scars from recent events? How can we serve him anyhow? The first thing you and I must do is come to terms with the fact that troubles, problems, tribulations, complications, difficulties, snags, glitches, whatever you want to call them, they come to the saved and the unsaved. They come to the good and the bad. They come to the rich and the poor. They come to the black and the white. They come to everybody. Troubles come. You don't believe me? I want to challenge you to go with me to Job, the 14th chapter, and look at verse 1. Job 14 and verse 1. Job puts it on the line. Job says that man born of woman is of a few days, and he is full of trouble. Job starts out by reminding us of just how frail we are. The mere fact that our origin is from a woman or from humankind reminds us just how frail we are. God did not birth you. Your mama birthed you and your mother is just as frail as you are. Job said, man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Job starts out by reminding us just how frail we are. You and I are the product of humanity. Job is saying our days are too few and our troubles are too many. 
He lives for only a short time, and during his life, he has his fair share of troubles. No matter how well you and I plan, no matter how spiritual you are, no matter how insulated your world may be, trouble will come. And I want to pause and tell you something. Not having this type of knowledge can cause you all types of irrational thought. You start thinking like, uh, well, they're not doing what I'm doing, and yet they're doing better than I'm doing. You start making thoughts. uh, You are the one struggling, but she's throwing away all her money. You are the one looking for a spouse in all the right places, and this individual has been, is on their third marriage. You're trying to have a child, and they have two or three that they really don't want. You've been praying for God to pour out his spirit. They haven't been praying for anything, and everything seems to be going all right with them. You have an apartment that you work to keep clean. They have a house that they can't even keep up. You start making all types of irrational thoughts. You start saying stuff like life is just not fair. Not understanding the difficulties are, are, are a way, uh, not understanding that difficulties are a way of life can zap you of hope. And, and, and you do know that the key ingredient to service is the ability for you and I to peddle some hope. I didn't say dope, I said hope. The ability to serve out dishes of hope. However, if I have lost what I am supposed to be peddling, then I am merely an actor or a hypocrite. You can't tell somebody about something you don't have. Trouble comes to the best and worst of us. Troubles come to the godly and the ungodly. They come to the weak and the strong. And sometimes you just have to be real about your situation. You have to come to terms that you are not by yourself. And and that's despite the obvious fact that God is with you. Let me just put it on the line. There are at least 10 people that have been through the same thing that you've been through and they survived. Well, I know you're saying, Pastor, that's a little strong there, but it's the, the truth hurts. Uh, and sometimes you and I have to come face to face with the truth. And, and, and those that didn't make it did it based on decisions that they made. They didn't want to make it. And then there are times that we have to have a heart to heart about our level of spiritual maturity. Are y'all listening today? Notice, I did not mention questioning whether you are spiritual or not. You and I need to start asking ourselves, what is our level of spiritual maturity? And we've been talking about this on Wednesday nights, that that if you and I can't endure some of the things that we go through down here, how are we going to make it when real trouble comes? You all do know, you all do know that, that, that real trouble has not hit yet. You do know that what's happening in Ferguson or what happened in Ferguson is just the tip of the iceberg. And if you and I are shaken by these things, and when I say shaken, I'm talking about to the point where you feel as though you can't make it through. If you can't make it through now, what are you going to do when the Spirit of God is withdrawn from the face of this earth? What are you and I going to do when it comes time for us to take a stand against whether you're going to live or whether you're going to die? Some of us can't take a stand if somebody doesn't speak to us on any given Sabbath or if somebody doesn't agree with us, then we're backtracking. But the reality is, if you and I can't stand now, how are you going to be able to stand later? I'm challenged, I'm challenged, I'm challenged because because I I need to ask myself on a regular basis, not whether I'm spiritual, but whether I'm growing in my spiritual walk with God. And so so as we look at the word of God, I want to take you to the word of God and I want to talk to you about how to handle the struggles of life. What do you do when trouble comes? 
Okay, Pastor, you, you, you put it on the table that trials are going to come, that difficulties are going to come, no matter who I am, where I am. Circumstances, problems are just a way of life. If, they are, if they're going to come, then, then Pastor, tell me, what's the best way to handle these things? Is that all right with everybody? Paul, Paul gives us a remedy and some dimensions of the remedy. For me, some of those dimensions of his remedy are rather therapeutic. I, I like to believe that Paul is giving us a therapeutic approach to handling the difficulties of life. Is that all right with everybody? Can we do a little therapy real quick? Is that all right? Why don't you run with me to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and let's look at verses 8 through 12. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 8 through 12. When you find it, say, I have the answer. When you see it on the screen, say, I see it. Whatever it takes, just, just, let's just go to it. Is that all right with everybody? Do I have a few folk in here today? The Bible says, what does the Bible say in verse 8? He says, the Bible says we are what? We are on, but perplexed. Come on, I wish you, come on, y'all. Can we get in this together? Come on. Hey, let, let, let's do it one. Take me back, take me back. I got about 10 people with me right now. Take me back. We are what? Hard pressed on, but not perplexed. But not in despair. Next verse, next verse. Persecuted, persecuted, but not what? Struck down, but not what? Verse 10, the Bible says, and the Bible goes on and it says, We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Verse 11 says, For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that, this, that, so that his life may be revealed in whose body? In our mortal body. Verse 12 goes on to say, so then death is at what? It's at work in whom? But life is at work in you. The first thing I notice from Paul is Paul does not pretend that he has not been through anything, nor does he pretend like he's not going through anything. Are y'all listening? Y'all listening today? Sometimes, sometimes we think in Christianity, we ought to pretend like nothing is going wrong. Sometimes we feel as though we ought to act like everything is just hunky-dory and peachy cute. Let's, let's put on a happy face and let's keep it moving. But the reality is, in order for you to deal with the issues of life, you have to be real that there are issues in life. Now, now, for me, I, 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 in, the, in this therapeutic process, I, I love a couple of theories, but one, one theory I like is what they call cognitive behavior therapy. And, and what I like about that therapy, it, 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 the ultimate goal of that particular therapeutic process is to help an individual to see that while they cannot control every aspect of the world around them, they can control how they interpret and deal with things in their environment. While I may not be able to uh, uh, escape the fact that you didn't speak to me, but I don't have to let you not speaking to me get me all mustered and, and confused and, and concerned about it. The reality is, may I, may I bring it home a little closer? I'm afraid of mice. Yeah, I get a little help up in here. I, 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 ain't no shame in my game. I, I, I'm not just afraid of mice. I have a phobia of my, I, I, I can stand them, I'm just afraid of them. They scare the wits out of me, I, 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 and I don't understand that they're so small and minute, but, but, but if I sat down in the counselor's chair, I, I'd have to go all the way back to when my folk first adopted me. Y'all not with me, I'm getting ready to do some self-therapy for just a moment, y'all forgive me. And, and, and in my living room, I'm sitting in my living room watching TV, and I saw early that morning, I saw a mama rat, a daddy rat, and all of the children rats run in front of me. And from that point on, 
I don't know how many rats, how many mice it was, but in my mind, it was mama and daddy and all of her children, and they were coming after me. So well, now, whenever I see a mouse, can I, can I, can I, can a confession is good for the soul? In one of my churches, I'm, I'm in a community service room. We're, we're putting up cans of stuff, and, and, and the women are in there, and, and I'm helping them put up cans of stuff, and all of a sudden, I heard a squeak sound in the trash can, and I knew what was in that trash can. I told everybody, I said, I don't know how long y'all going to stay here, but I'm getting up out of here. I, I, I got a phobia, I, I, I must admit. I, I, I don't even like, that. some people say the best mouse in the world is a dead mouse. I don't even like looking at dead mice. I, 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 I could not, I'm ready to really date myself. You remember the movie Ben with all them rats? I couldn't deal with that. Can't stand to see rats on TV. My wife will tease me sometimes. Y'all pray for my wife. She will tease me sometimes. Say, come look at this. Uh, look. And I said, no, baby, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm afraid of them. Cognitive behavior therapy does not remove the fact that I'm afraid of them. It helps me get through the fear of them. It does not discount my feelings and what I'm going through, but it also tells me that what I'm thinking will affect my feelings and, yea, my behavior. I wish you all were with me today. Paul, Paul, Paul uses what I believe is a little cognitive behavior therapy. The goal of cognitive behavior therapy is not to pretend that the problem does not exist, but rather understand how to deal with it or understand the underlying issue with dealing with it. Because for many of us, we are we have experiencing uh, 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 distorted thoughts and feelings that re we reinforce by faulty beliefs. And therefore, we involve ourselves in relationships, in situations that are unhealthy because we are unhealthy in our thought process. Paul, Paul is saying, I must be honest with you about something. We are hard pressed on every side. I was trying to figure this out. Wait a minute, Paul. Wait a minute. Paul, Paul, a minister of the gospel, loves the Lord with all his heart. But Paul says, we are hard pressed on every side. And when I looked up this word press, it means to, to take a, as though you took a grape in your hand and you squeezed all of the juice you could out of it. Paul says, something is squeezing me. Paul says, even though I'm a devoted man of God, it seems as though I'm experiencing the same thing that a grape goes through to get a little juice out of it. Paul is saying that the squeezing is an unrelenting event. It has not and it will not stop. He identifies the problem, but then he, 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 he steps into the problem and he begins, instead of diminishing the problem, he says, listen, uh, I, I'm pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. And I said, wait a minute, Paul. What's the difference between being pressed and crushed? You just playing with words, Paul. You just messing with me, Paul. But then I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I got me a couple of cans, Uncle Sirius, and, and, I, and I said, uh, let me figure something out here. Uh, in my, let, me, let, me, let me change hands. In my right hand, I've got a full can. Y'all see the lid is on it. I, I love ginger ale. Y'all forgive me, those of you that are very health conscious. It's, at least it's not uh, Coca-Cola, uh, but it's ginger ale. I, I love ginger ale. So, I, so I've got a full can of ginger ale, and then I've got an empty can of ginger ale. Uh, if you want to know how it got empty, I drank it. Uh, I sure did. I didn't pour it. That, that this, that I brought this from home. I just want y'all to know. So y'all forgive me for drinking a little ginger ale. But it does say it's made from real ginger. I don't know if that's true or not. But let's, I, I digress. Let me get back. Let me get back. So, so then, so then I'm trying to figure out, Paul, Paul, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm hard pressed on every side, but yet I'm not crushed. Now, I got this full can in my hand and I apply a little pressure to it and nothing happens. 
I mean, I, I, I realized that after a while, probably I could weaken it and it may burst in my hand, but, but, but it's not bursting now. I'm just, I'm giving it all I got. I, if nothing is happening, but, 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 but y'all forgive me here, but I've got this empty can. And if I just take my two fingers, I can crush it. Uh, uh, matter of fact, not only can I crush it, uh, I'll make sure I don't get anything on. I can, I can mess around with it. I, I can give it a hard time. But there's something about the same two cans, but yet the content make the difference. Uh, there's nothing inside of this can. I wish I had some help in here today. There's something inside of this can. Uh, this can is closed and is not open to the world. There's something inside of it that it cannot explain. Uh, something inside that vanishes pain. I'm trying to tell you that if you're going to go through something, you may be pressed. Uh, yeah, I've been pressed. Anybody in here ever been pressed? But I'm not crushed. Why? Because I got something inside of me something inside the songwriter said something inside so strong I, I know that I can make it I know that I can take it oh have you got something inside of you ah oh, the Bible says greater is he that is in me uh, than he that is in this world I'd rather be a fool can with God inside of me than be a weak nothing emptyless can that has no Nothing inside and so when troubles come I, I I collapse every time when problems come when folk talk about me and, and I just give in all the time why because I don't have anything inside of me but when I got something inside of me I start saying I'm gonna serve him anyhow uh, come what may uh, come what problem you can shake me but you won't break me out of this thing I, I'm gonna hold on this can this can collapse easily because it has nothing inside of it but I wish I had about 10 folk in here that said I want to be full of the power of the Holy Spirit I, I, I'm trying to tell you that that stuff will come your way uh, trials will assail you people will put you down but it's all right because as long as you got something inside of you but then Paul goes a little further Paul says I'm perplexed but I'm not in despair. <laughs> this gets me too. This gets me too. I wish I had about five people I could preach to right now. He said, it, what he's saying is to literally be unable to find a way out. That's what perplexity means. That's what perplexity means, Zoll, uh, Elder Zoll Jones. That's what perplexity It means to be unable to find a way out. But then, but then Paul says, but not in despair. When you look up the word despair, it means about the same thing as to be perplexed. But when you read it in the Greek, it says, but not utterly perplexed. Wait a minute, Paul, you're messing with me now, Paul. Paul, Paul you're telling me that you're perplexed. Uh, you, 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 you're, you're not able to see a way out, but, but yet you're not in despair, which means that, that, that you, are not, you are not utterly perplexed. That means that, that, that here's what I know. I, I'm up against something, uh, but I know Christ is all-knowing. Uh, he's omniscient. Uh, he knows what tomorrow holds. He's in control, and therefore, there Therefore, I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not giving up because I may not be able to see the way out right now, but I've been through this before. And just in the nick of time, I got any just in the nick of time folk up in here where God has opened up a door. The loan came through just in the nick of time. The, the, the employer opened the door just in the nick of time. The bid it went through just in the nick of time. Your phone call got caught, got caught just in the nick of time. You made it to the doctor just in the nick of time. Can I go a little closer? You pulled up in the gas station.
salvation just in the nick of time. Uh, uh, the check came just, you needed it in the bank by two and it got to your home by one. The, the, the postman never runs that early, but God said, I'm getting it to you just in the nick of time. You know how you do. You running up to the window. You know how the post truck sounds. You can hear it as it comes. And you listening with all you got. And sometimes you think you missed it and you go out to the post office, to the, to the mailbox four or five times and no, it's not there but God said I'm going to send it to you just in the nick of time you and I can be perplexed but not in despair I'm not utterly perplexed because I know that God is a just in the nick of time God that's why Paul said I know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Here's what Paul is trying to tell us. I am worried, but not to my detriment. I'm anxious, but not to my disadvantage. I'm concerned, but it will not handicap me. It's an annoyance, but not enough to keep me from moving forward. But Paul does not stop there either. He goes even further. Paul says, I'm persecuted, but not abandoned. Wait a minute, Paul. <laughs> Paul moves from the emotional stuff to the literal, somebody trying to lay hands on you. Oh, y'all aren't with me today. Y'all aren't with me today. And Paul says, I'm, I'm pursued by enemies but I'm not left to their power. Paul takes us from merely mental or emotional stuff that we, you and I might go through, and then he reminds us that there are some real things out there that want to do us bodily harm. Hostile forces that seek to take us out, that relentlessly pursue us, that surround us at every path, that seek to wreck our forward progress, that seek to rough us up if they could just get their hands on you. Paul says they are pursuing you, but you are not left to their power. Can I, can I, can I, can I help you all out a little bit and... Take you to the Psalms 5, verse 11 and 12. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I go there for just a moment? Y'all forgive me, uh, but, but I just wanted to share something with you. Those of you that are being pursued, those of you that are up against something, those of you that are being hindered in your service because somebody wants to take you out. Let me tell you what the psalmist says in Psalms 5, 11 through 12. It says, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let every let, let let them ever sing for joy. Hear, hear him now. Spread your protection over them uh, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O oh Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. I wish I had a few folk in here that would just let out a shout of joy because you don't have to take refuge in the Nashville Police Department. You don't have to take refuge in that gap that you got stuck up under your pillow. You don't have to take refuge in that hundred pound dog you got. You don't have to take refuge in ADT. You need to realize that God spreads his wings of protection over for you uh, and he says those who love your name uh, may rejoice and so when I go to bed at night I, yeah I got a little box on the wall that I can set as my alarm but, but I still have the peace of knowing that if the alarm went off that God is still able to keep me because he said I'll shed my protective wing over you. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Anybody ever been so tired that you thought you let the garage down the night before and you let it up, kept the back door unlocked, went to bed, slept through the night with your garage door wide open and you got your happy hips up, went to push the button and realized that the door was up all night, family inside. God said, I spread 
spread my wings of protection over you. I kept you through the night. I sent a special retinue of angels. And when somebody rode by your house, it looked like the garage door was closed because I have angels that are called garage door angels. They look like a garage door. They were keeping you through the night. Paul says, I'm pursued by enemies, <laughs> but I'm not left to their power. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pursued by enemies, but they don't have any power over me. Then Paul says, I'm struck down, but not destroyed. I'm down, but I'm not out. As long as I got a little kick left in me. You know, can I, can I bother y'all for a minute? You know, I told somebody, I, and I'm real about my story, I, I'm, I, I am a hood rat from Cleveland, Ohio. I, I, I rode through my old neighborhood just to remind myself, well, you ain't nothing. I, did, I, 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 I was done wrong and did some folk wrong. But I always knew, I always knew, I always knew that if I had a little kick, because there have been some times that, that people have gotten the advantage over me. You know, when you're a little shorter, you, you, you have a Napoleon complex, and, and, and your mindset is, I ain't going to let you get me before I get you. So, so I, I'm going to take you out. If you if you up in my face and all this and all that, I'm not going to give you a chance. It ain't about knocking no thing off your shoulder and all that. No, I'm going straight for you, and I'm going to take you down before you take me down. It is what it is. It is what it is. I wish, I, don't y'all sit up there and act like y'all don't know what I'm talking But some of y'all don't. Some of y'all have been insulated. Huh? And, 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 and so, yeah, yeah. It, it's all, but, but, but I thank God for where he brought me to where he has me now. I, I, I thank God that he's a good God. I, I, yeah, yeah I, I was running around packing a little 38 in my pocket and, 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 and working at a gas station and waiting for somebody to rob me. Brother pulled up on me, pulled up on me. He said, listen, man, listen, man, how much money you got in your pocket? I said, I got all that, all that I've collected here. So what I did, I pushed my pocket and let him see the butt of the gun. I said, yep. Yeah. Now, here's where I was with the whole process. You can take this money, but I ain't going to let you hit me. I'm not going to let you, because that's what they were doing in Cleveland when I was coming. They would beat you up after they robbed you. Well, I ain't gonna let you beat me up. I, I, it, it, it ain't my money. It's the company's money. So, so you, you can have that, but you're not going to hit me. it's the reality of life it's the reality of life and and so and so and so then i realize i realize i realize that all that stuff if 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 somebody got me down if i just had a little kick left in me and 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 you know you can call it girlish if you want to i'm gonna get a lick in somehow so if you, if you knock me down, as long as I got a little kick left in me, I'm, I'm going to kick you or something. Paul is saying the same thing. He said, I'm knocked out, but I'm not taken out. I, as long as I got a little kick left in me. He, so so, so, so if, I, if I just can hold on, if I just can fight the good fight, I'm going to make it through whatever comes my way. So, 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 so you may be asking, well, in all of that, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say that you've got to serve God anyhow it has a lot to do with changing your thought process that's what Paul was doing Paul was saying listen it's gonna get rough out there everybody's not gonna receive you it won't be easy but what you have to do is change your thought process can I tell you something Paul starts out in verse 7 explaining the whole problem. The problem is that you and I are earthen vessels trying to do a spiritual thing for a holy God. But here's what I want you to realize. Sometimes vessels must be broken in order for others to benefit from what's inside of you. (laughs) 
Oh, y'all. <laughs> Sometimes the only way God can use you is to break you because some of us got something inside of us, but it ain't coming out until God breaks us. And then you can tell somebody about how you made it through by the grace of God. Can I say that one more time? I, I, I kind of like that myself. Uh, we, we have to keep on serving him, realizing that sometimes a vessel must be broken in order for others to benefit from what's inside of you. Uh, if you believe that God put something inside of you, he may just have to break you in order to get it out of you. Sometimes you may have to say, I'm hurting, but at least I can feel the pain. Because I know something, trouble does not last always. Now I'm finished, I'm finished. We're getting ready to do, do a closing group therapy session. Is that all right with everybody? I, 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 uh, uh, Dr. Jenkins will get on me after the, afterwards, but, 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 but we're just going to have a little group therapy up in here for just a second. I, I, I just want to remind you that, 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 that yes, you are weak. Can I, can I get some help in here? I'm weak. Yeah, I'm weak. I got some weakness issues, but can, I, can, can we do a little group therapy? Uh, can you pop up on the screen our, our first therapeutic process that we need to go through? We're doing a little cognitive behavior therapy. Is that all right with everybody? Psalm 62, verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. The Bible says, one thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O oh God, that don't sound like a group. You don't have to pay to get in this therapy. Y'all ready? First, you got to admit that you've got some weaknesses. I got any weak folk up in here? Huh? Any weak folk up in here? I see some folk with two hands. I put them up. And if I could put both feet up, I would too. But it says one thing God has spoken, not the preacher. God has spoken. Two things have I what? That you, oh God, are how many believe that right now? Got, 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 got another one for you. Go to Psalms 126. Can I take you there for just a moment? Uh, let, let, let's see. Our mouths are filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it is said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. You know what? Sometimes you don't have to have an evangelistic meeting to get people to understand that the Lord is good. Sometimes you just need to laugh in the midst of some difficult times. Laughter says that trouble don't last always. Hear him now. Our mouths are filled with laughter. I'm getting ready to laugh right now. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. I, I see the hand of Ah, oh, yes, Lord. I wish I had a few folk in here that would just join me in a little laughter right now because God is good. Uh, here it is. He said, then it would be said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. I'm hoping that when you walk out of here today, instead of walking like you've been out of here, like you were sucking on lemons all day, that you walk out of here with a smile on your face so the neighborhood sees nothing but the white of your teeth and they'll wonder what's going on on up inside of there. Let's look at the next verse. The next verse says, the Lord has done what for us? And we are filled with? Anybody want to witness to the fact that the Lord has done great things for us? Verse three, verse, verse, verse four says, verse four says, restore our what? Our fortunes, O Lord, like streams of the Negev. Look at verse five. Verse five says, uh, those who sow in tears, come on, I wish I had some help. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Anybody had some sadness in their life? Let me tell you something, what the Bible says, you may sow in some tears, but you're going to reap with some joy. That's the promise from the word of God. And then verse 6 says, can I get one more? He who goes out weeping, carrying 
sowing seeds to sow will return with songs of joy. Carry sheaves with him. Somebody ought to give God praise because he's a restorer of brokenness. Got one more for you. Well, two more. Y'all forgive me. Psalms 145 verses 3 through 5 says, says sometimes, you know, you, you think about how, uh, how little you may be. But, but I, want, I want to tell you something that, that based upon the word of God, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness. No one can do what? Can fathom. No one can fathom. No one can do what? Fathom. Great is the Lord and most worthy of what? Praise. You can't even figure his greatness out. Next verse, next verse, next verse. It says, one generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. Verse 5, verse 5 says, they will speak of your glorious splendor, of your, of your, of, of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My last one, my last one, my last one, and I'll let you out. I'll let you out. Ah, Jeremiah 32, 17. I want, you, I want you to hear. I want you to hear a depressed prophet. I want you to hear what the weeping prophet comes to conc- the conclusion with regarding God. He says, ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth. <laughs> By your great power and outstretched hand, nothing is too hard for you. Oh, I wish I had some help in here right now. He said, ah, (laughs) sovereign Lord, you who stretched out the heavens and the earth just by your great power and by your outstretched arms, there is nothing too hard for you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, that even in the midst of all that you're going through, sometimes in your depression and your despair, in your heartache and your pain and your brokenness, sometimes you've got to do like Jeremiah. I don't know how Jeremiah did it. Maybe he stood out on the vastness of heaven and earth and just started looking around. And he said, oh Lord God, you stretched out your hands and created heaven and earth and if God if you can do that for nothing I just believe that you can do the same for me nothing is too hard for God now now what am I trying to tell you if God can ignite the flame of the sun uh, then surely he can do the same for you and me if God can position the stars in the universe if God can ordain the orbit of the moon and the sun if God can rotate the world on his axis if God can carve mighty mountains out of granite if God can fill the vast oceans with water if God can change the direction of the wind if God can create the beauty of the rainbow and design a snowflake individually if God can teach a mockingbird to sing then surely 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 God can and take care of whatever I'm going through. Surely he is able to do for us more than we can do for ourselves. Let me just pause for a moment and tell you that because God has all power, I'm not going to serve him anyhow. I'm going to worship him anyhow. I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to adore him anyhow. Why? Because God is good all the time. I'm pressed, but I'm not crushed. I'm in distress, but I'm not broken down. Why? Because God is able. And what God has for me, he has for me. And what God has for you, he has for you. And I just want to stand on the word of God right now and remind you that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper because God is able and sometimes in the midst of all that you're going through you have to serve him anyhow 
You have to know that God is a deliverer. He can bring you through anything. God can do anything but fail you. But sometimes our humanity gets so in the way of God's divinity that we can't see him bring us out. So what we have to do is realize that God, God's only need from us, his only desire of us is that we willingly submit to his guidance. When we do that, when we do that, God says, I will bring you through whatever. That does not mean that you're not going to go through anything. That does not mean that you won't face some heartache and some pain. It does not mean that there will not be difficult moments. But what it does mean is that those difficulties, those heartaches, those painful situations do not have to shape me into who I am. They don't have to break me away from the things of God. As a matter of fact, what they should do is draw me nearer, nearer, nearer to him. Remember, sometimes God has to break his vessels so that his vessels can do what he's called them to do. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what difficulty is in your life. But I do know this much. My God is able. It does pay to serve Jesus. That does not discount that you will go through something. But at the end of the journey, to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, at the end of the journey, John the Revelator says that, that the question is going to be asked, who are these in those robes? What, what qualifies them to wear those robes? And the response comes back, these are they that came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. John is not saying, John is not saying that, 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 that everything is just going to work out the way you want it to work out and everything is just going to go the way you want it to go. There are going to be some difficult moments in this experience, but here's the reality. At the end of the journey, To stand in front of Jesus and to allow him to put on my robe. The robe that I don't deserve. Because as much as I've been through, it still does not qualify me to make it to heaven. But because of the blood of Jesus, I made it in. One, one, one author said, I'm, when I get there, I'm going to try to recall the worst experience that I've been through. And I can imagine being there and, and looking at my robe and looking around and seeing everybody else's robe. And I, I'm going to try to qualify myself for being there. And, 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 and it says that I won't even be able to recall it. The only thing I'll be able to say is heaven was cheap enough. Oh, God, help us to keep serving you because it pays to serve Jesus. I'm getting ready to open the doors of the church. I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm, I'm going to make just a general appeal, and, and, and I'm just going to say a couple of things. Here's what I'm going to say. Anybody in here going through something right now? 
anybody going through something right now and 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 if it were not for the grace of God you would have thrown in the towel a long time ago maybe you feel like Paul you are hard pressed on every side but you also acknowledge that you haven't been crushed yet I got any hard pressed people up in here right now if, if I do I want to invite you to stand to your feet and and, and I, I want I want us to declare that the devil is a liar that God is more powerful than my most difficult situation anybody hard pressed difficult situation you're up against right now and and you don't know what to do but but here's what I'm, I'm about to tell you what Paul instructed us to do keep on keeping on don't throw in the towel now is not the time you and I've got to keep fighting because as as the instruments are playing one day this group that's standing right now, I wish I had some folk in here that would, that would, would stand in the name of Jesus and, 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 and acknowledge that one day I shall wear a crown. <laughs> when it's all over, I shall wear a crown. I shall see his face when it's all over. And I'm going to try to figure out, Lord, why did I have to go through all I went through? And it won't matter when I get there. Just as long as I see his face and, and put the crown on my head and the robe on my body. And I stand in front of Jesus. And after he places the crown on my head and I, I realize how good he's been to me and how he's kept me along the way. That crown won't fit my head any longer. I'll have to take the crown that he placed on my head head and cast it at the feet of Jesus and cry out like the angels of old holy 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 Lord God almighty oh come on church let's be real yo we've been through some things down here and it's not over yet but the good news of the gospel is there's coming a day and it's not long it's not long to the Fleming family we won't have much, many more funerals down here I won't have to make many more arrangements uh, for loved ones won't have many more sick days left down here sadly there won't be too many more surgeries down here Oh, I've come to tell you something, my church family, that he that shall come will come. And he will not keep silent. I can hear him. I, I understand that he's tuning up the instruments now. Horses are being made ready. He's trying to figure out which vest he'll put on. And he's going to make his triumphant entry into this whole planet. And he's going to start from the north and to the east and to the west and to the south. And I can see him as he makes his way into the, into the atmosphere of planet Earth. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the skies roll back like a scroll. And, and I can hear him as Gabriel blows the trumpet. And Jesus begins calling loved ones from their grave, telling, telling them to get up, come forth. I can I can almost see it there and then there's some folk that are alive and, then, and, and, and we all start making our way up to the portals of glory it's a triumphant ride we 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 we, we guide on past Blue, Pluto and Venus and Mars and, and 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 we're making our way up through the heavens and the eons of time and space and Jesus is leading us to the place called heaven I want to be there don't you I see him as he stands in front of the gates Yes, the gates. <laughs> Lift up your heads, ye everlasting gates, and the King of glory shall come in. I don't know who it is on the inside, but they say, who is the King of glory? And the response comes back, the Lord, strong and mighty, but he's not by himself. 
He's got some trophies with them. He's got some folk that have been through something. Uh, they've endured until the end. They kept the faith and held on. And he said, I'm waiting outside. I, I got to bring my children in so they, they can dwell with me and I can dwell with them. And there'll be no more separation. And that there, There's going to be a grand reunion around the tree of life. And those that have been separated by death and the bonds of pain and sorrow, they're going to be reunited. And and I, I just want to proclaim to you today uh, that I want to be there, don't you? I want to see him. So Lord, whatever I've got to go through down here, just give me strength to hold on. And Lord, when I've gotten weak, forgive me. When I've taken my eyes off you and focused more on me, please have mercy on me. Lord, when it's been more about me than it's been about you, please forgive me, Lord. For what you've put inside of me and I haven't been willing to give, Lord. Please help me to do what you called me to do, Lord. I just want to see your face. I'm getting ready to pray right now, but I'm wondering, is there anybody here that just wants to see his face? You just want to be ready when he comes. Despite the trials and the tribulations and the problems, you want to endure until the end. Maybe there's somebody here today that needs to make the ultimate decision and say, Lord, I, I want to surrender my life to you completely today. As the preacher prays, I want to walk down front. I want to become a member of this church today. That's what I want to do today. If that's you while I'm praying and while the song is being sung, I want you just to move out of your seat and say, Lord, I'm just coming to surrender everything to you today. I didn't plan on doing this, but I've heard your voice speaking. And so today, Lord, I, I, I want to do what you've asked me to do. If that's you, I want to invite you to come just the way you are. Father, thank you for, thank you for the joys and the sorrows of service. Thank you for the ups and the downs of service. Thank you for the grace and the mercy of service. Thank you, Lord, for the hope of service. Lord, please forgive us when we didn't do exactly what you asked us to do. Forgive us for being fearful. Forgive us for allowing circumstances and difficulties to hinder our service to you. Lord, today we stand in affirmation that we want to serve you anyhow, Lord. We don't need a special quarter to serve you. We don't need to be reminded. We just want to serve you because you've been so good to us, Lord. We want to serve you because you've given us something to tell. Oh, yeah, there's some folks standing right now that are pressed on every side. There's some folk that are perplexed on every hand. There are some folk that have been knocked down, Lord, but I, but I pause, Lord, and, and thank you that they're not crushed right now. Thank you that they're not, they're not in despair right now. Thank you that they're not knocked out right now. Thank you, Lord, that even though the enemy is pursuing them, you won't allow the enemy to grab a hold of them. Thank you, Father. I beg in the name of Jesus that you would renew within us the desire to serve you anyhow. And Lord, where we've messed up and gone off the mark, forgive us in the name of Jesus. Can we do like one of those scriptures told us to do? Just, just give God praise because he's worthy. Can we act like we've got a little joy up in here? Can we join the praise team and tell the story I want you to picture yourself you're standing in front of Jesus anybody here I'm putting my robe on right now thank you Lord thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell the story. 
Anybody got a story to tell? God brought anybody through anything? Anybody going through something right now? My God is able. today we've heard a sermon and at the end of this sermon we have to ask ourselves am I this Christian that's empty or do I believe that God came into my life and nothing can crush me I can be pressed on every side but when I leave here I have something to share because it's in me bow our heads for the benediction. Under Heavenly Father, Lord, this church wants to move forward. And so we're asking that today, in answer to our prayers, you plant the seed in our heart. And now we have, we, we have the great commission to take forward. In a month, Lord, we're going to engage in an evangelistic crusade. We're, we're going to tell this community that we have something to share. We have the truth, but Lord, we have something more important than that. We have a relationship with You. You are living in us. Lord, guide and protect us as we go about our ways this week. Give us eyes of discernment to recognize the opportunity to share Your love. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.